The county commission failed last night to make any progress toward filling the third district seat vacated in December by Melvin Boshears, with nearly half of the commission voting instead to leave the position vacant until voters select a successor in August. Johnny Bruce offered a motion to do just that, but County Attorney Joe Coker warned the commission that such a decision runs counter to state law, which requires the commission to appoint someone to fill an empty seat within 120 days of the date it is vacated. The law does not spell out a penalty for failure to meet this requirement, Coker added. But a citizen could sue, charging that failure to appoint someone to fill the vacancy violates the constitutional one-man, one-vote requirement. Coker added that such a lawsuit could possibly charge the county commission with malfeasance of office for failing to exercise its duty under the law. Several commissioners appeared to fear the political fallout from voting for or against any of the numerous people seeking the appointment more than they fear violating the law. Bruce did not withdraw his motion, but it failed by a narrow margin with two commissioners absent from the meeting while a third abstained from voting. Bruce was joined by David Atkins, Alvin Evans, Terry Singley, Bobby White, and Rusty Oreck in voting to leave the seat vacant until August. Thomas Hatmaker, J.L. Davis, Beverly Hall, Marie Ayers, and Charles Baird voted against the motion while Steve Rutherford abstained. Bob Walden, who at an earlier meeting suggested the process by which an appointment would be made, was absent from the meeting, as was Sue Nance. The absence of Nance was later explained as Hatmaker asked that everyone keep her in their prayers because her husband, former county clerk Don Nance, is suffering serious health problems. Although the vote to not appoint a new commissioner failed to gain a majority, a motion to hold a vote that night on appointing someone fared no better. Hatmaker offered a motion to fill the vacancy immediately, but only seven commissioners voted yes, one short of the necessary majority. Davis, Singley, and Rutherford voted against making the appointment while Atkins and Bruce abstained. Melvin Boshears, whose resignation sparked this division, ironically fared much better through his absence. A series of resolutions that Boshears asked commissioners to pass, asking TWRA and TVA to improve boat ramps and access areas on Norris Lake, was passed by a unanimous vote of 12 to nothing. While in agreeable mood, the commission also approved unanimously a motion to change the county's personnel policy so that hourly employees who must work on holidays but aren't eligible for comp time will be paid for those holidays. The measure affects mostly personnel in the sheriff's department and some employees in the sanitation department and the ambulance service and will cost approximately $30,000 a year. The commission then found itself mired again in controversy as Rutherford offered a motion that the county commission go on record as urging voters to support a referendum on increasing the local sales tax by a half cent in order to fund local road improvements. That motion passed 9-3 to three with only Evans, Hall, and Hatmaker voting no. But a second motion to advertise and publicize the commission's support for the tax increase ran into trouble. I have a problem spending taxpayers' money to buy advertisements supporting a tax increase, Atkins declared. 
Other commissioners were equally hesitant to allocate money. Rutherford noted that what he had in mind was more a series of community forums to educate the public on what the tax increase would be used to fund. Finally, an amended motion to educate the public without spending any money for paid advertisements was offered and approved by a vote of 10 to 2, with only Hatmaker and Evans voting no. The point-in-time count will take place Thursday, January 26, 2012, all across our county. Campbell County will participate in the count again. The county for the homeless will impact the amount of funding our county can receive for services for those individuals and families. Volunteers are needed for this effort. There will be training for volunteers Monday, January 23rd at the Community Health of East Tennessee Administrative Office at 4 p.m. If you're aware of a person or persons who may be homeless on January 26, please call the office at 562-2526. And did the birds battle? It was a split Tuesday night last night at the La Follette Middle School when the Jacksboro Eagles visited the La Follette Owls. La Follette took the girls' game. Jacksboro claimed the boys' game. It was the Lady Owls winning 32-17, to while the Eagles won 44-36. to David Graham has all the highlights coming up in his sports report. The Trinity Baptist Church will be hosting a free meal tonight at the church that will take place from now until 6.30, and you are invited. Tomorrow evening, the Jellicoe Highway Church of God will be giving out free meal boxes at the church from 6 to 7 p.m. There is a limited number of boxes, so it's on a first-come, first-served basis. And we learned that a popular race team owner was in town yesterday. Team owner and CEO of Roush Racing, Jack Roush, was visiting yesterday at the Tennessee Technology Center in Jacksboro. He and members of his crew visited the mechanics department and talked about high school in Florida. The visit was a surprise to most of the students taken the class, and they were very excited to meet the team owner of such drivers as Mark Martin, Carl Edwards, and several other famous drivers. And that's our news for today. Stay tuned next for the press release from the Sheriff's Department coming up. Now here's the report from the Campbell County Sheriff's Department. There are 11 names on our report today, the number of people booked into the county jail in the past 24 hours. George B. Ayers, 48, of Pioneer, entered the jail to serve court-imposed time. 37-year-old Sonia Deshay Bell of South 8th Street, La Follette, for domestic assault, vandalism, introduction of contraband into a penal facility, possession of a Schedule II controlled substance, and possession of drug paraphernalia. 26-year-old Rob Walter Brown of Jacksboro Pike La Follette for domestic assault. Carlene Doherty, 29, of Patty Hill Road Caravel for evading arrest and on a capious bench warrant. Richard Roy Halcombe, 35, of South Sudini Lane in La Follette on a capious. 34-year-old Mark Brandon Longmire, of Kyle Street, La Follette, on a capius. Kevin Lynn Norman, 31, of Thelma Circle in Jacksboro, for domestic assault and possession of drug paraphernalia. Kirk Larry Snodderley, age 32, of Claiborne Road, La Follette, was charged with evading arrest. Eric Spradlin, age 30, of Main Street, Jacksboro, for aggravated assault by domestic violence. 
19-year-old Cameron Robert Taggart of North 13th Street, La Follette, on Acapius, and last on our report today, Taylor Brian Williams, 18, of Cherry Bottom Road, Caraville, for aggravated assault by domestic violence. And that's a look at our news, and that wraps it up for this Wednesday. Thank you for joining us for the midweek edition. Be sure to join us back here again tomorrow evening about this same time. Good Wednesday evening, everybody. Welcome into your midweek edition of Birthdays and Anniversaries, brought to you by Eastside Pizza and Deli. Celebrating a birthday today, David Smith, 55 years old today. He starts off our list today. Ronnie Johnson, 65 years old. Sandra Bolton celebrates a birthday today, as well as Jack Duncan. Uh, Jack turned 43 today. We got a belated birthday from the 15th. Looks like that was back on Sunday. Uh, Leon Green celebrated a birthday and no anniversaries for today so that does it for our birthdays and anniversaries you need to get your information turned in here if you have a birthday or anniversary this week you can call it in here at 562-1450 566-1450 or 562-3557 or you can fax in your information here to 562-5764 or email it to wlaf at bellsouth.net that does it for our birthdays and anniversaries for today so you all have a good evening i'll see you back here tomorrow stay tuned your news continues